Welcome back to another edition of Squib Kick Radio. I am your host this time, what seems to be from a long time, Elias Powell, and I am joined here with actually just Riley Pollock today. Riley, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing really well. It's uh, the CFL season started, so I'm right in my element right now. You are. Week one of the CFL kicked off last week. And we have lots to get to with that, a notable suspension to chat about as well. We also have a little bit of NFL updates. Hasn't been a whole lot of news coming out of the NFL in the last couple of weeks, but we do have some of a, a bit of a pulse, if you will, on the NFL. But first, big news out of Canada, and we have to talk about it. Riley, Raptors, they're NBA champions. I know we're a, uh, I... a football podcast, but yeah. Yeah, I can't it. believe it. I mean, it's uh, it didn't look like it was going to happen. I mean, when the series first started, I was like, I think the Warriors will win in six. But then Durant didn't really come back. Clay battled through some stuff, and the Raptors played unreal defensively, and they made shots that they were missing in previous series, and they came away with it. And what a, what a party uh, it was in Toronto, well, basically for the past, five days six days since they won yeah well and what a party it was all across Canada with all of those games being just shown in huge venues which I thought was was pretty surprising and it's just it's just good to see but yeah kudos to the Raptors finally getting their first NBA championship and I I agree with you Riley I was thinking Golden State was coming out of that series with with the championship but I think It came down to that second game that I think it was the second game. Maybe it was the third. I can't even remember. But when Clay missed that game, that was sort of the turning point of the series itself, I found. Yeah, I mean, Steph's good. But if you can play the box and one against him, which the Raptors did a little bit without having Clay or Durant there, I mean, Clay, Clay battled through some stuff. I mean, he tore his ACL, came out and hit both free throws before going into the locker room. So he battled. Durant tried to battle. He tore his Achilles. So, I mean, it was just a couple tough breaks for Golden State. But uh, when the hist- when people look back on this five, ten years from now, they're not going to remember how the Raptors won. They're just going to remember how the Rap- or that the Raptors won. Yeah, you are, you're completely right. And on the subject of the Raptors... Surprisingly, we do have a a couple listener questions, which is awesome because we are not NBA experts. Um, but let's let's chat about those, Riley, because I'd like to I'd like to hear your opinion on that. And the first question right. being, since the Raptors won without a quote unquote a big three in the NBA, if you will, are teams going to now navigate from targeting superstars in the offseason and through trades to create that big three and go to a more depth and balanced roster? Well, I mean, it worked, didn't it? Uh, they The Raptors had eight or nine players that contributed quite a bit to this finals. And you saw when the Warriors lost Durant, they were very, very shallow on the bench. They did not have a whole lot of players that could step in. And the Raptors just grinded them down. I mean, Fred Van Vliet was all over Steph Curry. He was tired. He was playing lots of minutes. And, I mean, if you're going to have three superstars, it's going to be tough to get that deep bench. And the Raptors proved that there is a kryptonite to the style of play that the Warriors had. But do you think teams will navigate away from that? Not really. I mean, I think that the NBA is a star-centered league. Teams love having those big stars that put butts in the seats and players like playing with each other. And a lot of these players are just going wherever they want, playing with their friends, doing stuff like that. And I don't see that changing just because the Raptors won this year. What do you think? Yeah, I don't think it's going to change. I think the Raptors put together a good team and I don't know how much it was them going out and saving on their salary cap and going to get those medium ground players. I think they drafted well and they just put together a a really good team. And the NBA is not going to go away from targeting those big stars. You have LA that's currently, I guess the LA Lakers, that are currently in the process of putting together the next super team before LeBron James retires. So 
that seems to be the the common course of action in the NBA. It just so happened that the underdog came out, which was super awesome, and I'm pretty stoked. Yeah, that was a that was a fun run for the Raptors and for most of Canada. Yeah, for sure. And uh, the second question we have here is: This the end of the Warriors dynasty? Uh I gotta think that it is. I mean. They're not going to have Clay for most of next year. They're not going to have Durant if he decided to resign at all next year because Achilles is are really a year long injury, and then they're probably going to have to put him on a pitch count the next year, just because he won't be able to play back to backs and stuff. Like they'll just ease him back into it. So I think I mean Steph and Draymond will be a duo, and I think the Warriors will still be good. But with LA building a roster. We don't really know what's going to happen in Houston because Chris Paul has asked for a trade, apparently. So, I mean, there's some good up-and-coming teams in the West, and I just... I don't think Draymond and Steph can win a championship together by themselves. So unless they go pick out another superstar to come play with them, I, I don't see the Warriors winning another championship in the foreseeable future. Yeah, it's it's an interesting question because what is what is a dynasty? When you say the word dynasty, first thing that comes to my mind is the New England Patriots. Yes. They didn't make the Super Bowl every year. No. But they still win. Do I think the Warriors are probably going to take a bit of a back seat? Yes. Are they still going to make it to the Western Conference final every year? Yeah, probably. Um as far as their dynasty being over, no, I don't think it is. Steph's young. Draymond's young. Um, they have Clay. He's young. He's stated that he wants to stick around. So that's their core three. They're getting rid of Durant or Durant's going to go. Um, so that opens cap space to bring someone else in. To be honest, I, I don't think they're. I don't think it's over. I think they're maybe going to take a two-year break from being in the finals, but give it three years and they'll be back. All right, I like that. Uh, yeah, I, I still see them being a top th- three team probably in the West. But if Draymond and Clay, well, not Draymond, sorry, if Durant and Clay are, well, they're both done for next year, Durant probably leaving, Clay probably resigning, they're going to take a little bit of a hiatus. Yeah, you're right. But we could see them back to full potential in, I'd say, three years. Yeah, that's sort of what I'm thinking as well. Well, let's uh, let's move on to some football. Let's just take care of the news. Let's get it out of the way. Let's deal with what's going on in the NFL. Interesting news out of Detroit today. Matt Stafford played the in- entire last season with a broken back. That's just interesting. Yeah. I can't believe that. Yeah, it's pretty crazy because, I mean, we've seen Tony Romo break a bone in his back before, and we saw Aaron Rodgers break a bone in his back, and he missed a good portion of last season. So, uh... Either his injury was worse than Matt Stafford's or Matt Stafford just has a better pain tolerance because we did not hear a peep about that all season long. But Matt Stafford played like absolute hot garbage. Yeah. Well, yeah, he puts up big numbers or has um, and just hasn't had a whole lot of talent around him. Last year, yeah, was definitely his worst year as a starter in my eyes. Yep. But some reasoning behind that. So that's always interesting to see. Personally, I... This is concerning. I'm not a huge fan of my franchise quarterback playing an entire season with a broken back, especially when you're the Detroit Lions and you do not have a Super Bowl caliber roster. That's the risk reward from Matt Stafford playing a whole season is just like. It makes no sense. I get that. Yeah, your fan base is teetering on the brink of destruction because your franchise has literally done nothing, but it's it's just a it's just a bad move, and and that's probably a lot of Matt saying he's good, he's good, he's good, like fighting the the medical staff and wanting to be out there, and and I understand that, but from an owner level and a GM level, you need to just grab the reins a bit and sit the guy. Your back's broken. Like, you can't do much. Or at least, like, once you're... If it's not hurting him to keep playing, once you're eliminated from the playoffs, shut him down, right? Like, yeah. what was the point of him playing out the season if they weren't going to make the playoffs? He could have rested up and been 
well, I'm, it sounds like he's a hundred percent this year, but still like give him more time. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I'm not sure when the injury took place exactly, but if it's at like week 10 or whatever, I, I get it. Like, you can have him play it out if he can, just because. But yeah, not a huge fan of the move from Detroit, and it's concerning if you are Matt Stafford. Um, other news from, I guess, quarterbacks. I guess we'll try and limp together that transition. Uh, Josh McCowan <laughs> uh, retires, which I actually yeah. I miss this. I I've been actually completely checked out from the world of sports for the last week. So this is this is news to me. So I'll let you handle this, Riley. When did when did he retire? <laughs> he retired today, I believe. Oh, it was really? Either oh, late wow. yesterday or today? Yeah. Um, I had no idea he was forty. Uh, yeah. I thought he was like a younger thirty-year-old, to be honest with you. Just like kind of career back up until these past couple years with the Jets. Ninety-eight career touchdown passes. His best season came in twenty seventeen when he had eighteen TDs and nine picks in thirteen starts with the Jets. But yeah, mostly a career backup, but. He wasn't. He was a serviceable backup for his entire career with low end starter capability. Yeah, it's he's just sort of coasted through. He hasn't really made a big splash. He's just always been that solid number two guy. You can come in maybe if you need him on a three game stretch. He can maybe get you a game. But hats off to a, a solid career that and a long career too. That's it's just yeah. that's just good to see. It's really what it is. Yeah, he carved himself out. He carved himself out a nice chunk of change. Yeah, from uh, being a backup quarterback. Yeah, and that's pretty much what you want. Uh, yeah. Moving on, Riley, your Falcons. Uh, I'll let you take this one, just because it's your boys, and more specifically, your boy. Yeah, my boy Julio is expected to be extended before camp. He would be a free agent at the end of the 2020 season if they don't extend him. Matt Ryan's 34. Uh, he's not getting any younger. So I think you give Julio, you know, five, six years. Let Matt Ryan retire with his number one man. I mean, Julio's, the in my, in my views, the best receiver in the league when healthy. He puts up the most yards. He puts up a lot of targets. His back half in terms of touchdowns was good last year. His front half was horrendous, but Sarkeesian can be blamed for that. Um, yeah, I mean, you just you just got to bow down to Julio and give him whatever he wants at this point. Yep, I agree. Um, I think a little, little fantasy tidbit here, and I'm completely biased because I actually have him on my team, but if Julio gets extended before camp, look for a absolutely monster year from him. Just getting a new a new deal done, he'll be feeling fantastic and... It's a pretty dumb argument, but some people are going to say, does he deserve it? Because he's going to get paid a lot of money, and he's just going to he's going to come out and light the NFL up. It's going to be it's going to be a big season from him coming off a, a what's I would assume to be a very large contract extension. Yeah, he's going to get some money. Yeah, for he's, sure. he will. He will be getting paid for sure. He's 30 years old, so it's going to be his last mega deal. Probably. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And if anyone's earned it, it's him. All right. Uh, I'm excited for the season, Eli. I think too. the Falcons are going to be good. We're we're getting close. I don't think they are. They're just they always say that you guys will get blown up by injuries in the first 4 weeks, like what usually happens, and then it <laughs> will be a write-off. But that is to be determined. Uh last bit of news here. Uh Rams are thinking about extending Jared Goff. Uh, I hate this. Do not do this if you're LA. He is not a franchise quarterback. You haven't seen nearly enough from him. He is a terribly is, it's a weird statement, but a terribly good schemed quarterback. Yeah, he's, he's terrible. He's in a good scheme, but he's in a good scheme. Exactly. He's a game manager. He's like one of the top end game managers in the league. Yep. But yeah, I just haven't seen enough from Jared Goff. Yeah, he had a good season last year. They went to the Super Bowl, but Todd Gurley put the team on his back for a lot of the season. As soon as Cooper Cup went down, you saw Jared Goff go back to being okay. Yep. Uh, I Cooper Cup made him look good last year until he tore his ACL, and Todd Gurley was there to carry the load for the team, and now he's got some sort of arthritis in his knee, so I think we're going to see a regression from Jared Goff this season. I think you're going to see a regression from the entire Los Angeles Rams. If I'm the Rams, uh, is this? Do you know if this is his last year, Riley? 
Uh, I'm not too sure. Just let me look it up here for a second. Yeah. So if um, if it is his first, if it is his last year, I say you let him walk. If it's not, if he's got two deer, two deals uh, left on his like contract, I would let him play the season, trade him, and then trade him. LA is going into what's going to be the nicest football stadium in the country. They are going to be looking to capture all of the fans, and so, I think they just draft a quarterback. So this isn't his final season. Next year would be his final season, yeah, and he's two in years. UFA after that. Yeah. So, yeah, his cap hit is only 8 mil this year. Pretty good. Next year it jumps to $22.7 million. So, uh Next year seems like a perfect time to give a team that's desperate for a quarterback and fleece them in a trade deal. Yep, pretty much. Get some picks, maybe try and trade up uh, because next year we've got the uh, we've got some good quarterbacks next year in the draft. So uh, yes. yeah, I don't see I don't see uh, Goff getting extended in Los Angeles. I just it, it's a dumb move, and they're looking to make some large moves. Yeah, I don't think you I don't think you do it with two years left on the contract, like before the season here. You let him play it out here. Maybe he surprises me and you and has two good seasons in a row. Then maybe you think about extension, but you're gonna extend this guy, give him like what I would assume would have to be the top quarterback money or like top three quarterback money in the NFL based off one really good season. You gotta remember he wasn't very good a couple seasons ago. Now with Sean McVay he looks really good, but yeah, I think you got to let him play this season out before you start giving him any big, big money. Yep, I agree. I agree completely. Well, that uh, that pretty much concludes the news in the NFL since we probably last chatted with you guys. It has been a while, at least for me. I've been away, Riley. Riley's been holding down the fort, which has been fantastic. But, uh, Riley, get let's get into uh, a bit of a week one recap in the Canadian Football League. All right, well... As you could probably tell from the uh, the little snippet of a post I posted on Squib Kick today, I'm pretty pissed off with Simone Lawrence, Eli. Yep. Um, I think the entire province of Saskatchewan is pissed off. Yeah, it was... Ugh. So, basically, if people are just listening for NFL news for us, here's what's going down in the CFL. The Riders have a quarterback named Zach Caleros. You all are pretty familiar with him. He's had some concussion issues, and three plays into week one, Caleros gets absolutely dirty by Simone Lawrence. Caleros slides and takes a shoulder in the dome. That's another concussion. He's on the six-game injury list. In my opinion, he should never play another down of professional football because I think that's like three or four concussions in the past two years. you got to think about your health and your brain after football. Um, Simone Lawrence got two games and is expected to appeal. Eli, I want to get your thoughts on this. Before I go off on my rant about the CFLPA, what did what did you think of the hit? Was two games enough for you? So, this is the crazy part. The game was actually pretty early where I am on the West Coast. So, I had not even gotten home from work before he got his head taken off and removed, was removed for the game. But, this is my take, Riley. Do you know who I'm mad at? Who? I'm mad at the goddamn Riders. He should have never been re-signed. That man should not be playing football right now. He had a huge history of concussion injuries all last season. Everyone knew it. His brain is absolutely scrambled. He's help. If I was a doctor, he should not be allowed on a football field. I get it. You love the game, but your brain is mush. Don't re-sign him. He's done football. The Riders absolutely blew it, and now our season is so screwed, man. The writer's head office just absolutely blew this. It literally took three plays. Three plays before yeah. we lost our starting quarterback for six weeks. And you knew it. Even if he got tapped on the head and it was a concussion, he's done for six weeks. He didn't even yeah. need to get his head absolutely taken off on a dirty hit. You know, you don't want to see that. That is no place in the game. But it doesn't matter. If he got hit in the head, he's done for six weeks regardless. And the Riders absolutely blew it. Now you have to deal with back stri- or backup quarterbacks for the rest of the season. All right, but let's look at this. 2008, starting QB goes down. A young man by the name of Darian Durant comes in, a relative unknown, guides the Riders to 
three Grey Cups, winning one of them. Should have been two, but we won't get into the 13th man. Um, 2015, Durant goes down, and we haven't had a real quarterback since. So I like this young man by the name of Isaac Harker. I like Cody Fajardo, but I do think that Harker, or right now our second string quarterback, was the third string quarterback at the start of the season, has Durant potential to guide this team for a long time to come. Do you think this is going to be a 2008 situation where Durant comes in and saves the day, or do you think it's going to be a 2015 to now situation where we still don't have a future QB? Uh, Fajardo didn't see anything from him. To be honest, it was the game was actually pretty hard to watch. I'll be completely honest with you, Riley. It was just some terrible football. Um, I think it was halftime, and I was sending you screenshots, and he was he entered the game on only after three plays and he was two for eight in the CFL. So it's just like, that's pitiful and just awful. I mean, I don't, I don't think he's the answer. He needs to make, he needs to come out and make some completions. Mind you, we schemed for the run because that's just what you do. And clearly within the first half, uh, the coaching staff had no trust in him. Uh, They pulled him after half for, Oh, I don't even know what this guy's name. What is his name? What's Isaac our third Harker. string? Isaac, Isaac Harker. I liked what I saw from him, to be honest. Um, Me too. I think he, I think he can get us through. Is the answer? Is he the answer? I don't know. I'm gonna need to see a bit more from him. But in terms of Fajardo being our our starting guy moving forward, uh, I don't think so. To be honest, he's not even gonna finish the game this week. He's gonna get pulled, and uh, this Harker kid's gonna go in. Yeah, see, the problem I have with Cody Fajardo is that he's antsy in the pocket. It never looks like he gets his feet set, and then he's running. He yep. runs a lot. He gets yards, but, I mean, you can't just win based off a running quarterback. I really liked what Harker did. He was tough in the pocket. He made some big throws. I don't know why the Riders announced Fajardo as a starter, maybe because he just has a little bit more experience, but they have said that both QBs will play. So we'll see. They just signed Brian Bennett from Winnipeg. Well, he got cut by Winnipeg, but, I mean, they have two solid QBs there, so they're not going to pay him. But he looked good in the preseason, too. So after he's only had a week of practice. I don't think he's going to get any playing time. But he's another young guy that could make a difference for this Riders team. I'm more optimistic this year than I was last year with our backups. I never liked Brandon Bridge. Um, I just don't think he's, he was quarterback smart enough. I just don't think he made enough smart plays. I like these young guys. We'll see what happens with the Riders, but, I mean, just a sickening play there by uh, Simone Lawrence, and we'll see with this William Powell guy at running back. He looked pretty good in game one, so maybe the running game can carry this Rider offense this year. Yeah, I don't think so. I think it's pretty concerning, to be honest. I don't see a running game really being a carrying force. You need someone to throw the ball. That's only... You just what you need you just need to be able to throw the ball and our starter can't so we'll we'll see hopefully we see something something better but i mean you can't do much when you lose your starting quarterback three week or three plays into the new season for six weeks yep so yeah um okay well i need to go on my little rant about the cfl players association here because Simone, they've preached player safety. They say, oh, we need more player safety from the league, blah, 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 blah. Simone Lawrence gets two-game suspension, and now the CFLPA has to represent him when he appeals this two-game suspension. But the thing is, they have to represent Zach Caleros too. So what are they saying to players that are on the receiving end of these hits when they're representing the guy who clearly committed an infraction, and he did another headshot on William Powell plays later as well? I mean, this guy deserves to sit out these two games. This appeal process is a joke because he's probably going to play this week until the appeal gets heard. And he's got to serve this two-game suspension. If it gets dropped down to one, I'm going to be choked because they're saying a big F you to Zach Caleros because of this headshot that he took in the second straight game. Odell Willis did it to him last year before the playoffs. And now he takes another headshot from Simone Lawrence. It was. It's an absolute joke that he's even getting represented. If I was a CFL, well, they have to. I get it. It's a union. But, like, he's got to serve this two-game suspension. Yeah, and uh, they've also showed clips a uh, couple years ago uh, with Hamilton against the Red Blacks, and uh, Henry Burris hurt his knee 
uh, in the prior week, and then they were playing Hamilton, and Simone Lawrence just targeted that weak knee. Uh, there was a, uh, almost a brawl that ensued after that. So, uh, dirty player. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think he was susp- suspended for, you know, that hit on, on Smiling mm-hmm. Hank, but uh, I was surprised to see two games. Yeah, two games. I think two games is about as much as you can give someone unless he murders somebody. I mean, that's that's a good chunk of, of football season, right? I mean, in hockey, you can give out five, ten games because they're still coming back for 80% of the season. But football's a good chunk. Two games is a good chunk for football. I'm okay with the amount of games, but if it gets appealed down to one game, then I'll be pissed off. Yeah. Um Maybe this is an unpopular opinion. I think um, dirty hit suspensions should be worth more than PEDs, but that's just me. Fair enough. Yep. Maybe we'll we'll bring that question to uh, to our listeners this week. Yeah, at me, Twitterverse. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. All right. I think I'm ready to move on from yes. the riders. Um, awesome. Awesome news next. Stamps lose. Screw the stamps. Hate the stamps. I don't even have to talk about them. They lost. That's all I care about. <laughs> yeah, well, they lost a bunch of players. And in years prior, John Huffnagel's been able to fill those holes. But I didn't really see a whole lot of free agent moves from the Stamps. And, I mean, they have like seven new starters on defense or something. They still got four interceptions. But the offense struggled in the back half of the game to put the ball in the end zone. And the Red Blacks were able to come away with it. I mean, if your defense gets four interceptions or four turno- turnovers in general, the offense has to be able to put the game away. Yep, I agree. I don't have much, right. to, I don't have much to add. I'll be completely yeah. honest. I will. I don't watch Stampeder games, so <laughs> not much to <laughs> add to that. Um, Edmonton. Edmonton looks good. They have a quarterback. Yep. They have a real quarterback, Riley. Yeah, they had Mike Riley, and everyone, the sky was falling for a sec there when he went to BC, but my goodness... Did Trevor Harris look good for the Eskimos last week against Montreal? He threw for 447 yards, three touchdowns. C.J. Gable had a huge week as well for them on the ground. He had, I believe, 154 yards rushing. So the offense looks real good. I'm worried about Edmonton's defense a little bit, but they did do some things to improve it. I, uh... I think that this Edmonton team could be a real contender come November. Yep. They if they've got a quarterback. That's what you need. Yep. And four hundred and forty seven Our- yards. That's huge. Yeah. That's a huge game. Yeah, he, he huge went up game. in his first in his first regular season game with a new team. I mean, you just don't see those numbers. Yeah. Well, and look at the riders for reference. Our quarterback finished the half with <laughs> Two for eight. 16? <laughs> 16 yeah. yards? 16 yards. <laughs> so, Somewhere yeah. around there. That having, might be a little high. Yeah, having someone with arms that can throw balls is huge for football. So good on yeah. good on Edmonton for getting getting their man. Yep. And the guy that left BC, though. Or y- left yeah, UBC. you've got a bit of an opinion piece here, Riley. Uh, laid on yeah. us. Um, BC paid too much for Mike Riley. Uh... And it affected their depth all over the field. And you could see it against Winnipeg this week. They lost 33-23 to Winnipeg. Never really looked in it. They were leading at half, but Winnipeg just came away and blew them out in the second half. They've affected their depth. They're only dressing two QBs to deal with the cap that they're dealing with right now just to feel the team. And they have 11 starting Canadians. You're only supposed to have seven, or you, like, seven's the minimum so 11's pushing it a little bit, and I just got to think that that's another cap issue that they're starting so many Canadians. So it's uh, I don't think the Lions are going to be very good. In my CFL season preview, I had them in the five spot, and uh, I'm not going away from that. I just Mike Riley proved last year that he can't do it by himself when Edmonton didn't get to the playoffs, and they didn't have a defense, and their offense was largely based on him. And now he's just doing the same thing, but he's in Vancouver now. And uh, I think BC will be last place in the West. Nice. That's a bold, bold prediction. Sorry, Lions fans. Yeah. 
Yeah, sorry, Lions fans. I really <laughs> want you guys to start filling your building, but I don't think it's going to start this year. Nope. Nope, definitely not. Uh, sweet. Well, that is, uh, that's that's the news out of the CFL from week one. Why don't you hit us with some week two picks? All right. I have a new thing this year. I'm doing straight up picks and playing against the spread as well. So they're two different things. I went three and one in both of them last week. Uh, so yeah, Cal- Calgary blew my perfect game. I picked every other game right against the spread as well as straight up. So this week I have Saskatchewan at Ottawa. That game's Thursday, 7.30 Eastern time. I have the Riders winning outright. So obviously I have them at plus six as well as the odds I got them on Bodog on Monday. So Saskatchewan wins, Saskatchewan plus six, book it. Uh, BC takes on Edmonton Friday at 9 Eastern. I have Edmonton with the win straight up, and I will also take them on the points at minus 4. I just I just don't see BC being very good, so I've already explained why there. And then uh, there's only three games this week because three teams are on a bye. Um, I have Hamilton at Toronto Saturday at 4 o'clock Eastern. Hamilton will win, and they will win by the minus 2 spread that they are slated for. All right. So, uh, yeah, I, if you follow my picks, you're going to win a lot of money this summer, I promise. All right. Solid picks. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to do some digging and see how you did last year to see, uh, see what the bar I was is 51, at. Oh, I was 51 it. and 31 straight up last year, but I didn't pick against the spread. Okay. Well, let's see if you can improve on that this year, Riley. I count on it. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Well, that is uh, that's everything we got for you guys today. As always, thank you for listening. Check us out on the social medias at Squib Kick Radio, and we've got another episode for you guys next week. We're gonna recap uh, everything that happened in the CFL, and hopefully, we've got some got some CF or NFL news for you guys. So, with that, we will uh, talk to you later. Peace. I got you stuck off the real, the, the realness. Think not, this, 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 this shit's too hot. Empire walking on the surface of the sun, the sun, the sun.